Hey everybody, Adam Steele here. Um, yes, thank you. I'm often known as the Reaper guy. I do a lot of production with Reaper and tangentially to that, I just got a Steam Deck. These things are kind of awesome. This thing is a little bit bigger than something like a Nintendo Switch. It's essentially a PC that goes in your hand and it's, it's kind of big, but it's also just an awesome gaming platform. Now, this runs natively on Linux, and being a Reaper guy, Reaper runs natively on Linux. Can I get Reaper running on here, and would it be worth having as a kind of secondary recording device? Let's find out. So, disclaimers, I did get this as a gaming device. Um, I might sell it again, because it's really cool, but I don't have much time for gaming, it turns out, but I've wanted one of these since they were announced and they gave me the opportunity, with a two-day window, mind you, uh, to buy one and said, hey, if you don't want one now, tough. So I was like, ah! And so, yeah, I bought this and it as a gaming device has been pretty cool. Um, it burns through its battery life if you're playing like a AAA title with heavy graphics and heavy GPU, CPU, all that kind of stuff. But it has a desktop mode so it becomes regular linux so we're going to do that i'm going to switch the camera around and we're going to pull out an audience evo 16 which i've put behind the camera and we're going to get that recording into reaper on here and talk about things like uh, whether you need a dock whether you need any extra equipment and how you can make this work for you all right so as you can see i've got a camera over the shoulder for this I did really try and get the uh, screen capture from the Steam Deck, but it seems that mirrored mode is still a bit buggy. Uh, definitely doesn't do it in this game mode, but in the desktop mode that we're going to use, it kind of tried to do it and wasn't quite perfect because it's a really weird resolution. The screen is 1280 by 800, which is a little more than uh, 1280 by 720 you'd get in 720p just a little deeper which seems to be what kind of messed that up a little bit so over the shoulder it is and the first thing that I'm gonna do is hold down the power button and that comes up with an option switch to desktop and that's gonna do exactly what it says and that brings us up in their version of Linux which takes the same settings from the game mode so the things like the Wi-Fi work I have this anchor dock uh, plugged in which is taking the power from the official Steam Deck power unit But you can use any USB PD to power this whole setup and in fact you don't have to power it at all because battery and Off that dock. I'm running a USB cable into this audience Evo 16 So I'm excited to try all this out the first thing to do Which I did already do but I'm gonna kind of repeat myself is I went to the Reaper website which to bring that up is uh, Steam and X brings up the keyboard. So I can type in reaper.fm. I just saw the Audion Evo 16 come up there as an option. So I can go to download Reaper Linux X664 download. And that's now downloaded that. So let's go into the downloads folder. There's my Reaper project. I also got a Sonic Adventure ROM. So what I want to do is extract this. So I held down on it there. And so I can, ext oh, next one, extract, extract archive here. And that will quickly give me all the Reaper files. So I can go into that. And there is an install reaper.shell file there, which I'm going to run. See if that gives me a menu. Open with, or just run in console. There we go. So the options we have, it's a lot of text you won't be able to see very finely, but one of them, I, is install Reaper. So I'm going to hit I on the keyboard, enter. Path to install, number one, enter. Desktop integration, yes, enter. Uh, whatever that is with the sim link, yes. Proceed to installation, yes. 
password for deck. Ah, right. So this isn't going to work because I need to actually put in a password first. So we'll be back here in a second. There we go. Installation complete. Now, if I get rid of this, it is kind of tricky using your fingers on here, but we should have under multimedia or somewhere. There it is. There's Reaper. So if I execute that, do not ask again. There we go. There's everybody's favorite program. And it's asking to buy it. Of course, it is still evaluating. But of course, I do have the full license. This is just for ease of use. And where it says Jack at the top, I'm going to click on that and change that for now. Just to ALSA. Because I know by choosing the device that I already have plugged in, which is Evo 16 and Evo 16. It says input channels two, but I can probably change that to uh, eight and eight sample rate Whoop. 48 kilohertz. It is a little fiddly doing this. And bit depth, I'm going to go with 24 and hit OK. Error setting input device period count. Well, let's go with, oh, periods three. Did that work? Yeah, change the periods, whatever that is, to two. And we're good. 10 milliseconds in, 10 milliseconds out. 24-24 uh, channel. Fantastic. So now I can test that out. I can double click, make myself a new track using input one. Make sure that's monitor rooted. Grab a guitar cable and plug that into the front of the ID, not the ID, into the front of the Evo 16 just to make sure that that's working. But that should be it. So if I go one, input, gain, and we just saw something on the screen there. So there we go. So yeah, there we go. I'm getting input and that will record nice and solidly into the Steam Deck. And so I could have as many channels on here as I want. And of course I can link ADATs up to this. And so I could have up to 24 channels running off this EVO 16. And the output by default will come out of the monitor outs and output one on the EVO 16. So I could do this as an audio production as I can with anything else. Nice and easy. And of course, if I want effects, I can click effects and I get all of Reaper's uh, default effects. And so if I then went on to install um, the SWS extensions and repack, I could install things like the Toucan Studios plugins, which are all JS based. So they are all native to Linux as well as Windows and Mac OS. And anyone who makes any x86 and 64 bit uh, Linux VSTs for their plugins. They will all work on here. But yeah, it's a tiny screen. So uh, working on this, if I just keep clicking, I'll get more tracks up there. But th this could be awkward. You can use Bluetooth to add a mouse and a keyboard, uh, which would make this far more rapid in terms of production. If you, Again, if you happen to have those, let's say maybe you like to play RTS games uh, while you're traveling. That would be amazing. You could have a keyboard and mouse to play things like StarCraft and the old Command and Conquer games or whatever, and then use that to produce on here. But that's if you already have those kind of things. They don't have to be Bluetooth. If you've got a USB dock like I've got here, you could just plug them in. And yeah, the dock isn't necessarily needed. Like I keep saying, you could have, if you've got an interface that is just USB-C on this end, so USB-C to USB-C, That'll work natively with the Steam Deck, just on battery power. As it is, that's where I'm going to leave this for today because there's so much more that we could explore in terms of how much it can handle. Uh, but for now, that is me. 
So there you go, it's not exactly kind of the most ideal production environment. The screen's kind of small, some of the add-ons you need to kind of make it a little tricky. But if you're somebody, as an example, let's say you're a front of house engineer who uh, tours with a band and you have the kind of desk with you where you plug a USB uh, connection into another computer, MacBook, Steam Deck, whatever, and that just becomes an interface and can just multi-track record the whole show, that means you don't have to take a second computer around with you. You can do stuff on your phone. You can have this to game with on the long travel journeys between shows. Plug it into, maybe plug it into power so it charges, but then also plug it into your desk. Just have a Reaper template ready and just record everything onto a micro SD card. Maybe put a 256 gig micro SD card in there and you could record an entire tour's worth of audio from a desk like one of the Digicos or even a Behringer X32, something like that. So there are reasons that you might want to do this, but I can also see why you might not. And like I say, I, I recently, you might have seen the video that just came out, got this, the M2 MacBook, which is going to be my recording go-to device. Although this costs three times as much as the Steam Deck for the configuration that I got. So it doesn't actually record any, it doesn't record audio any better than the Steam Deck does because the interface is where the sound quality comes from. So what you're taking the audio from is what that works with. Uh, but CPU limits can be a thing and the fact that this runs natively on Linux means that unless the plugins that you want to use third party are made specifically for uh, Linux, then you're looking into kind of wine and that kind of stuff which can get really tricky or you can install windows on this thing which is something that we might look at in another video if i've not sold this yet so let's have a, another look if i can and thanks for watching i hope you've uh, enjoyed this little video where i've uh, got to use my little gaming console as something completely different Check out the Discord if you want to talk about more of this kind of stuff. Check out the Patreon if you want to support us to make more crazy videos like this. And look at our YouTube channel for all the other videos and subscribe and share and like and all that kind of stuff. Because it all really helps us. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.